Hey guys, so I've got this problem here. This was assigned to one of my tutoring students for homework. So we're going to go over it in tutoring. So I thought we'd work it out here um, as I'm looking over it. So this is from the Hibbler books, 122. So the 10th edition. So it says we've got a metal stud punch. It's subjected to a force of 120 newtons. Notice that this is perpendicular right here. Um, and then it says determine the magnitude of the reactive force at the pin A, which is here, and in the short link BC, which is here. We also want to find the resultant internal loadings acting on the cross section at D. Okay, so a few things to find. The first things it asks for, the reaction forces, those are external forces. So we're going to be basically doing like a solid, not a solids, a um, statics problem, right? You're going to draw the free body diagram of the handle, label all the forces, and then find those reaction forces. Okay, so the first part is just like a statics equilibrium problem. Okay, it's like a frames and machines problem. So let's go ahead and draw the handle. Hopefully your drawing will look better than mine because that does not look too good. And then let's label our points here. So this is B. Let's say this is A. Um, D is here. And then over here at the end we have the handle. So if we label our forces, I've got 120. It's in newtons. And then at the pin, I've got how many forces? We should have two forces for a pin, right? Because a pin allows rotation about the axis coming out of the pin, but doesn't allow translation. So the forces prevent that translation, All right? So we're going to have an AY and an AX. I have no idea if these are the correct directions, right? I just always assume they are positive. And then if when we find the value, we get a negative, we know we picked the wrong direction. Same thing for BC, I'm just going to say it's positive going up, right? If it's if that's incorrect, we'll find out later when we get a negative. Okay, now let's go ahead and put the distances on here because I'm going to need those. All right, so D to the 124 here is 300. That's millimeters, and then A over to D is 200, like that. And then notice we've got this 30 degree angle here. So let's put that on there because we might need that in a minute. And then lastly, I need some sort of distance for this point B, right? Because I need to know where that is. So let's look up here. So we've got this 50 millimeters. So it's 50 millimeters between B and A. So from here to here is 50 millimeters. Okay, so let's keep that there. We'll add some more stuff as we go along as we need it. Okay, so first thing we want to do is figure out what equation we want. Right, this, like I said, this is just like an equilibrium problem at this point. So we have three choices for equation, right? We have sum of forces in X, sum of forces in Y, and then a moment. I'm going to go with the moment equation about point A. Because if I do that, I can solve for FBC, which will give me one of my unknowns. So that's what I'm going to do first. You could do the sum of forces first. It's not going to matter. Um, this is just personal preference. Okay, so if I'm taking the moment about A, I don't have to worry about AX or AY because they both go through that point. I do have to worry about FBC though and the 120. Okay, so let's look at the 120 here. Remember I said this was perpendicular. And that's going to be important because we when we take a moment, remember we need a force times a perpendicular distance. So if this is perpendicular here, then the 300 plus the 200 will be in my perpendicular distance when I'm doing my moment, right? So that makes it easy. So for this one, for the moment, we're going to have 120 times 500 millimeters. Now, is that going to be positive or negative? Because we're assuming counterclockwise is positive. Well, I think that's going to be negative, right? Because if I'm doing this, it's going to go clockwise, which is negative. And then now I need FBC. 
Okay, well, if we look here, I've got a vertical force, but I've got this distance at an angle, right? It's kind of like a diagonal. So let's look at what we can do with that. So you got a couple of choices. Um, you're going to have to rotate something through an angle, right? Because I need a perpendicular distance. So either I need to rotate this force so that this would be the perpendicular distance, what we were given, or I got to, you know, rotate the distance so that it's perpendicular to the vertical force. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the angle uh, between the force and then a line that is perpendicular to the 50. All right, so what I want to do is find this angle here. Now, do y'all think we can do that, given what's in this picture? I think we can, right? Because we got 60 degrees here. So if that's 60 degrees, what do we think this is going to be? Well, if you're not sure, let's go over how I find that out. All right, so what I always do for these situations where I've got some angle somewhere far away from, you know, where I'm looking, I draw the XY system, and then I draw a system where it's rotated. Okay, and then I find the angle that was given. So we know that the angle between the vertical and this rotated axis over here is 60 degrees. So that matches up with this angle right here. So that's going to be 60. All right, now we know that one's 30, right? Because 90 degree angle. Well, now this right here is perpendicular too. So that means this one's got to be 60. And then these two are perpendicular, so that's 30. So this right here is 30 degrees. Okay, so that's how I always find angles if I can't really visualize it in my head. Okay, so now we've got this 30 degrees. So now what I can do is I can, you know, find the component of FBC along this line, and then 50 would be that perpendicular distance. Okay, and is this going to be positive or negative? It's going to be negative, right? Because if I'm over here and it goes up like that, it's clockwise. All right, negative. FBC, we're going to do cosine 30 because this is adjacent. And then that distance here would be 50. Okay, set it equal to zero. So now I can solve for FBC, so that gives me one of my unknowns. And let's see what that is. Okay, so that one is going to be a negative number, right? Because I move this over, it becomes positive, I divide by negative. And then the magnitude is going to be that 1385.64. And that's Newton's. It's positive, so going up was the correct assumption there. Actually, you know what? I just said it was going to be negative, didn't I? What am I thinking about? Okay, I'm confusing myself here. Okay, so negative, that means this is going down. should be going down. That makes more sense, actually. Okay, so negative, this should be going down. See how easy it is to mess up these signs? Okay, so now we've got this, and that was one of the things it was wanting. And the Hibbler book, usually if you have a number greater than 1,000, wants the answer in kilonewtons. So we're going to have 1.385 kilonewtons. Okay, so now we've got that. And then let's go ahead, and now we need to find AX and AY. So I'm just going to do FX first. Okay, so we've got AX. We said it was positive. AY we don't need. FVC is vertical, right? We don't need that. But what about this? Well, this isn't on X or Y, right? That means we got to find components. So we need to find an angle. So let's find this angle right here. And we can find that by looking at this 30 degrees, right? Because that whole handle is rotated, you know, up 30 degrees. So let's see what angle would go here. So I'm going to do this again just so everybody can, can see it again in case you want to use it. Okay, so the 30 degrees, that's between the horizontal and then the rotated 
lines. So that's 30, right? That would be 60. This would be 30, right? And this one here corresponds to this. So there's that 30. Now I can find my components, all right? So for the x component, if I'm using, you know, the standard x, y, for this, we would have 120 sine 30, right? Whoops, I need it on AX here. And that's going to be positive. Okay, so we've got that. And then let's set that to zero. So now with our AX, we just saw if you can move this over, you get a negative 120 sine 30. All right, so let's see what we get here. All right, so there's the 60 because sine of 30 is 0.5, right? So we're going to get negative 60 newtons. Negative just means we drew the wrong direction here, but it's still correct for this diagram. All right, so there's the negative. It wants the magnitude for A, so let's just hold on to this. I'm not going to circle it yet because we need the magnitude. Now let's do Fy. Okay, up's positive. So we got positive FBC. We know that value though, right? It's negative 1385.64. We have plus AY minus the Y component of 120. So what would that y component be? Well, it's going down, so it'd be negative 120. And then this is the adjacent side, so we use cosine 30. So now we can find a y. So let's see what that is. OK, so if y'all can see that, there's the value. So I have negative 1489. It's negative on this side. we got to move it over, so it's going to become positive. So we got 1489.5, and then that's going to be Newtons. Positive, so this was the correct direction. So now I want the magnitude of this, right? So A, which will be the magnitude, is just going to be the square root of AX squared plus AY squared. So see, the positive negative doesn't really matter when we do the, the magnitude because it's squared. All right, so we're going to have negative 60 squared plus um, the 1489.5, square that. And then what do we get? Okay, so that one we get uh, 1490.71 newtons. All right, so the book probably wants 1.49 kilonewtons. Okay, so this would be A, magnitude of A there. Now, that was all just like a regular statics equilibrium problem, right? So nothing nothing too new there. Now, the, the solids part, the mechanics materials part, is when we look internally. So now this is going to be the second part. So we want to find the internal loadings at D. Okay, so what we're going to do, we need to look internally. So we're going to section this at D because that's the point it told us to look at. So we're going to section it and then we need to pick which side we want. I can look at this side or I can look at this side. I personally think this side would be easier, right? Because this side has the pin and the link and all that. This one just has 120. So let's look at this side because it's going to have less going on. Let's draw it out. So it looks like that, and let's make the external force pink again. So that's 120. Um, again, we know this is 30. And then let's make the internal force, those forces, be blue. Okay, so if we're looking for the internal loadings, we want to look for uh, the normal force, the shear force, and the bending moment. Okay, so the normal force, I always draw it going out of your member, okay, like that. 
Shear force, well, it's, it needs to be perpendicular to N, right? Because it's got to be parallel to the cross section, whereas N is perpendicular. So I'm just going to pick that direction there. Notice these are perpendicular. And then we need the bending moment. All right, I just usually assume it's counterclockwise because that's positive. Okay, so now we've got this. So I need to find these things here. Okay. So now notice this is perpendicular. So it's going to be easier for us to use this frame now where like this would be X, this is Y. Okay, and then we don't have to do any rotation with these angles. So let's do that. Okay, so once we get to this, it's now just like an equilibrium problem. Okay, so we want to use our three equations so we can solve for these three unknowns. And let's see what we get. All right, so let's say this is the positive x. So with that, we're going to have a negative v. That has to equal zero. So obviously v at point d is zero. Okay. So there's no shear at point D. And then let's do Y. So Y, let's say this way is positive. So we're gonna have a positive N minus the 120. So N then, the normal force, is gonna be a positive 120, and that'll be Newtons. So again, that means that's the correct direction. And then finally, our bending moment, that internal bending moment. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the moment at D. Counterclockwise is going to be positive, right? So this one is going to be a negative moment, right? Because it's going to make it rotate clockwise. So we're going to have negative 120. And we already know our distance, right? It's that 300 millimeters. So 120 times 300. And then we got to add the MD here. I assumed it was positive, so we're going to put plus MD. And now we can solve. Okay, so bring these over here. You're going to get, um, what is that? 36,000. And now remember, this is millimeters, though. So that would be Newton millimeters, which we don't usually see. Usually we want Newton meters, right? So let's divide by a thousand to get it Newton meters. So that'd be 36 Newton meters. Okay, positive. So counterclockwise was the correct direction there. And that's MD. Okay, so now we've got our internal loadings. And that would be how you go about doing a problem like that where you need to find the normal force, the shear force, and the bending moment at an internal point. Okay. Alrighty. So hopefully you found that helpful. I will see y'all next time. Have a good day.